Welcome to our devotional today. We are in Genesis chapter 19, which deals with the destruction of Sodom. Uh, in Genesis 18, we saw that the destruction of Sodom was foretold by Jesus himself, and Abraham uh, there uh, comes to the place where he prays to God and asks God, intercedes for Sodom and asks God for deliverance, if at all possible, from Sodom and asks the question, Wilt thou destroy the righteous with the wicked, and shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And those are two incredible questions that we need to ponder and that we need to consider. And uh, now as we come into Genesis chapter 19, we find a destruction of Sodom. And in verses 1 through 3, yesterday, we looked at the fact that the two angels that had visited Abraham visit Sodom. The Lord, the pre-incarnate Christ, did not go with them to Sodom. We looked at that a little bit yesterday. And today I want us to see how Lot is delivered from the lusting Sodomites. I want to read verses 4 through 11, and then we're going to look at those verses today. In Genesis 19, verse 4, it says, But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them, and shut the door after him. And said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes." Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back, and they said again, This one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and they came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand, and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut to the door, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. So here's the story. We know in the first three verses that the Bible tells us that Lot was worried about what the men of Sodom would do if these men were to seek to try to abide in the streets all night. And as a result of that, Lot pleads with them to come into his own house so that they would be safe. And as they go into the house of Lot, we see that Lot entertains them and feeds them by giving them unleavened bread. And verse 4 of our passage tells us that it was in that evening that the men of the city gather near the door of Lot's house. It says that they compassed or they surrounded the house round, both young or both old and young, all the men or all the people from every quarter from every region in that city you see exactly what's going on here is what lot thought would happen the homosexuals that lived in sodom pursued lot's visitors just as he expected that they would and here they are they see these uh men not really probably recognizing that they're angels because they've taken upon them the form of men as they come to do this task and they're quick to see new blood in town, as it were, new game, and they attack quickly. And uh, homosexuality was a very was very popular in Sodom. The Bible tells us in verse four that both the young and old people from every section of town were involved in this sin, and that they came to Lot's house, they came to Lot's door, and they wanted these men to come out. And as we think of that, we also can look at our own country and we understand that our land is fast becoming like Sodom. The young and the old alike are involved in the sin of sodomy. And there's no shame. Just like here, they did not seek to conceal their sin. They announced it publicly and unashamedly. And as I thought about that, I was reminded of a couple of verses in the Word of God. In Isaiah chapter 3 and in verse 9. We find these words, Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 9, Isaiah is speaking, and he says there, it says, The show of their countenance does witness against them, 
and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. So here he reminds us of the fact that Sodom was not ashamed of their sin. And friends, we're living in a day and age today where sin has no shame with it. And I'm not just not talking about homosexuality. I'm talking about sin in general. People no longer have any shame whatsoever about their sin. It's, it's open. It's blatant. And uh, they are not trying to hide their sin from anyone. In Philippians 3.19, it says, Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, Nogesis, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. And truly today, as it was in the days of Sodom, people glory in their shame. They glory in those things that they ought to be ashamed of, but yet they are glorying in them. And friends, in our day, we see this unashamedness illustrated in the marches uh, as they have exalting this vile lifestyle. And uh, that which man is exalting and that which man is praising, God has not changed his mind on it whatsoever. And it's important for us to understand the mindset of God in this. Not to ask ourselves a question, what do we think or what do people think, but what does God say? And that we understand that someday we are going to give an account to him. And that God expects us to hold the standard that he has, not only on this sin of homosexuality, but on every sin. And that we would do what it is that God wants us to do. Not only do they surround the house, and not only do they desire to, to have homosexual relationships with one another, but they desire to have homosexual relationships with these men that have come to Sodom, to, to Locke's house. They demand homosexual activities. Notice in verse 5, it says, They called unto Locke and said unto him, Where are the men which come into thee this night? Bring them unto us that we may know them. Now, the word know in that verse is used this way a number of times in the Word of God, and it means to know sexually. It means to have intimate relationships with. And uh, that is exactly what they are desiring as we come into this verse, and it's important for us to know that. Uh, these men wanting to have sex with these men, the know them is a euphemism for sexual relationships here. And, friends, we need to remember, not, again, once again, not what we think, not what, not what society thinks, but what the Word of God says. And the Bible makes it very clear that men having sex with men or women having sex with women is a perversion of normal sex life. Anything of sex outside of marriage, even if it be between a man and a woman, but it's outside of marriage, it's against God's decree, it's against God's perfect plan. And the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 1 that homosexuals leave the natural way and they go with that which is against nature. And it's not natural. We see that um, not only in the proper form of, a, of human life, but we also see it even in animal life. We see that, that males with males and females with females is that which is against nature. In Romans 1 Verses 26 and 27, it says, For this cause God gave them up on the vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, have, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was Meet. If we were to take the time to go to Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22 today, we would see that God in that verse calls homosexuality an abomination. And friends, we need to stick with what God says in his word, not just simply with what our feelings are from the word of God. This is a sin, like all sins, but this is also a sin that is condemned universally in the scriptures. Every time it's mentioned in the scriptures, it is condemned. Let me read a couple of verses for you today, uh, reminding us of this as we close out our devotional time today. In 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and 10, 
It says, Knowing not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither, adul neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 10, we find these words. It says there, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for man-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Homosexuality is something that is always condemned in the Word of God, and we need to go with that which God says. Tomorrow we'll continue our study on Lot being delivered from these lusting sodomites. Have a great day.